Welcome back to Bay Area Focus. I'm your host for this segment, Veronica Dela Cruz. I'm just stepping in for Michelle Griego. But a question for you. How can a zoo help build strong and competitive organizations? Well, here to explain is the author of Roar, How to Build a Resilient Organization, the world-famous San Diego Zoo Way. Sandy Ash is our guest today. Hello, Sandy. Hi, I'm excited to be here to roar with I'm you today. I'm excited to hear you roar because I understand <laughs> that you've been speaking to crowds and that's one of the first things you have them do, right? Well, you know, that's one of the things that's most memorable for people. <laughs> it's very unusual to be asked to stand up in a large group of people and roar with unabashed confidence and excitement. Well, you know you've put yourself on the spot, right? Yes, I'm going to have to roll. We'll wait you're, for the end of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but I'm going to hold you to that. So sure. this word resilient, right? It kind of is the focus of your book, and we all know what it means, but in this context, what exactly does it mean? Well, I think typically, Veronica, when we think of resilience, it's mm -hmm. almost a rear view perspective. We sort of look back at the last hurdle or challenge we overcame and we ask ourselves, was I able to bounce back from the setback? Mm -hmm. And in this book, we really bring a broader context and understanding around resilience. Resilience really is about our ability to be proactive and cultivate a mindset and a skill set to be able to deal with the stresses, the challenges, the, the crazy uncertainty of these very extreme times, and in that agility and adaptability, stay relevant mm -hmm. and ahead of the pack as an individual, as a team, or an organization. All right, and you do this entire thing using the San Diego Zoo as a backdrop. You've written this book, right? Yes, exactly. And the San Diego Zoo is just such a wonderful organization. Everybody loves the San Diego Zoo. <laughs> and uh, they just had their centennial. And as they were celebrating their 100th birthday, we thought, what a beautiful time to tell the story of an organization that's really prevailed and overcome a lot of adversity, keeps getting better and better, innovates and creates, and is absolutely relevant always. All right. Well, working with the San Diego Zoo, how do you think that they've been resilient? You've worked with one of the executives. What has his secret been? There is no magic, you know, it's not a sort of waving of the wand. I think it's really a commitment as an individual, as an organization to say, we really are committed to our overall health and well-being. We're committed to being agile and adaptive, and we're willing to instill the processes, the rituals, and the practices to make sure that we put people first inside of the organization. That sounds simple. Mm -hmm. It's not typical and easy for organizations to do that. Well, you actually have a cheat sheet, a cheat sheet of sorts, right? Yes. If you read the book, there's actually a, a five-step plan. Yes. All right. So what, what do we need to remember here? So five-step uh, model for resilience uh -huh. that is applicable for anybody, any team, any organization. And uh -huh. the first is maintain self-control. Okay. So in a world where we pressed and pulled and stretched and bent, it can be very difficult for us to maintain calm focus. So that would be number one. Number two is for us to manage our conditions. You know, we are bombarded by conditions uh -huh. and we're we're very often distracted and fragmented and the question is how well do we control our conditions rather than have our conditions control us which is right? very important very Absolutely, important yes. very difficult to do in a world of 24 7 365 mm -hmm. ringing pinging texting and tweeting right oh my goodness yes we all have way too much technology in our lives and so it's very very difficult to, to work around that we almost have to find a workaround these days exactly <laughs> Get, to get away from the technology, to disconnect for a second, right? Well, there so is so that's, little that's white space in our lives anymore. Mm -hmm. And where once perhaps we had a boundary between work and life, now it's boundaryless. Right. Really, you can't segment or separate the two. Mm -hmm. So people are under constant demand. Yeah, yeah. Disconnecting has been the new luxury. So I want to ask you, because if you aren't, aren't resilient as an individual, uh, as an organization, there actually is a cost 
Yes. Right? There actually is a cost involved. Well, absolutely. If you think about it, when people are resilient, you're more attentive, you're more focused, you're more patient, you're more committed to customer service, you deliver better quality products, you're more innovative and more creative. On the other hand, when you're not resilient, when you're not agile and adaptive, you don't have the tenacity, the perseverance, and you're not staying relevant, mm -hmm. that's where people become disengaged, they get tired, they get sick. So in the context of an organization where there is a lack of resilience, what we see is disengaged employees and therefore lower productivity, mm -hmm. loss of quality, perhaps loss of customers, loss of business, increased sick days, and medical costs, just to name a few. Just to name a few. I mean, that, that was just a few. I know that there are many more. So of course, we've got to bring you back to, we've got to go full circle, right? We, we want to hear you roar. Yes. <laughs> we want to hear her roar because that obviously is a very important uh, element to what you're doing here with individuals and organizations. Exactly. And just to create the context before I roar for mm -hmm. everybody, mm -hmm. is the roar is a symbol of strength, mm -hmm. of confidence, mm -hmm. of dominion. If you think of the lion's roar, right. it tells a powerful story. It tells mm -hmm. a story of being at cause rather than effect, mm -hmm. of being uh, at um, dominion over its environment. Mm -hmm. And so when we roar, it's an expression of our our power, of our tenacity, of our unstoppability. Mm -hmm. And at the San Diego Zoo, we talk about the roar of passion <laughs> and purpose. She's holding back. I, I am. I, one more time. Okay. Roar. 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 How's that? Excellent. <laughs> Well, for more information on Sandy Ash and her book, Roar, you can log on to the RoarBook.com website. Again, it's TheRoarBook.com. Also, the proceeds from this book will go to animal conservation. We'll be right back. Thank you.